Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 17 February 2018. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit our website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold, the commodities that tend to affect related stocks. Rising tide lifts all boats. When the broad market goes up, it tends to take many stocks with it and vice versa. Therefore, we keep an eye on the broad market through market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also using technical analysis of the four broad market ETFs. If we take long and short trades in alignment with the industry strength and weakness, that adds additional edges to our trades. We keep an eye on the industry rotation using industry scorecard and heat map. We'll study that as well. Along the way, we may look at some of the trade examples from Q Forum and certainly look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together, we call this template at a glance template because using this template, in few seconds, around 10 seconds, we can decide whether there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart using unambiguous checklists on the chart indicators. This way, after coming to the memory support line, oil went up. That was in the daily chart. In weekly chart, the recovery is shown, but it was not enough to change the candle color to neutral. The weekly backdrop candle color remains magenta, that is bearish. In the daily chart, price is near value area. If it tilts down from there, then it may give a go with flow trend following short trade opportunity. Instead, if it goes up from here, then we will not have any low risk opportunity on the long side because the stop loss that is below recent low would be far away. Oil went up this way. We can see that from the bullish candle in the weekly chart and it also went up on Friday. Later we'll see that the broad market ETFs also recovered throughout the week. On Friday, initially they went up, but by the end of the day, they paired back their gains. This pairing back was not true for US oil closed relatively higher on Friday 
that is shown by the relative performance tilting up. So we are not sure whether US oil will go up from here or down from here. If it goes down, then it will be easier to take a low risk short entry. Right now, there is no entry opportunity in US oil. We are now analyzing gold. From the weekly chart, we see that it also recovered this week and it recovered more strongly than oil. This week's candle turned cyan, that is bullish, and it closed higher than the high of the previous week. In the daily chart, it came to the yellow direction support line and then went up from there. On Friday, it did pair back. As the weekly candle color is cyan, we are not going to look for any trend following short trade right now. One possibility, if gold comes back little bit and then goes up from there, then it will create higher highs and higher lows and therefore give us a trend following go with flow long trade opportunity with stop just below then recent low. We may keep an eye on that. Before looking at broad market ETFs, let us look at the market breadth. Every week we analyze market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts. Because this analysis is using weekly indices and weekly interval, it is to be used for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Both the indices continue to be in uptrend. Last week, some memory support lines in the NYAC index, there were two of them, both of them were broken. However, the index had recovered last week and then bounced up further. NASDAQ had bounced up from the memory support one week ago and the bounce up continued further this week. NASDAQ went up more strongly this week, changing the candle color in the weekly chart to neutral, that is yellow. NYSE went up but not enough to change the candle color to neutral. It remains red, that is bearish. Both NASDAQ and NYSE indices recover, but still they are far away from the earlier peaks. We need to see that from here, does it continue to go up, completes a V shape recovery, like it has happened many times in the past, or it goes down from here. We have no clarity right now, not from the weekly chart. We will try to see if we get some clue on where the market may go from the broad market ETFs daily charts. Looking at the internals, that is the new high low at the top advanced decline in the middle and up down volume at the bottom. Most of them recovered but the recovery was not enough. New high low for both NASDAQ and NYSE closed above zero after going up but very close to zero. Far from the recent peaks made by these internals. The same is true for advanced decline. They went up but reasonably far from the earlier peaks and up down volume actually went down 
and up down volume of NASDAQ turned negative. This shows based on data that though the indices recover and more stocks went up than went down, under the hood more selling in terms of volume was taking place. How the bigger players make the market like this is to buy stronger stocks, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, etc. that moves the indices higher and then silently selling more stocks in terms of volume. Finally, of course, we can make money only based on price movement, not based on these internals. So we study this. However, finally, our trading decision is based on the price movement. Overall, the internals are neutral. Many of them closed above zero but very close to zero. So we may conclude that it is more neutral than bullish. In summary, the indices continue to be in uptrend in the longer term weekly chart. They will be in uptrend for a while. It will take time before they display lower highs and lower lows. Many of the internals, five of the six internals went up and closed positive but marginally positive. We may say that the internals are neutral. Let's now look at the broad market ETFs and from there we'll see that like the indices recovered, ETFs also recovered and now resting around the value area in the daily charts. We start our broad market ETF study with SPY, S&P 500 ETF. We are looking at it using at a glance template. Last two weeks, SPY dropped heavily with very and extreme high activities and the drops were sharp. This week it recovered also with very high activity indicated by the dot on the volume bar. However, the bounce was not enough to turn the backdrop candle color yellow. It remains bearish, that is magenta. In last market roundup, I had mentioned that there is high chance of bounce because there was bounce trade setup in SPY and in most of the ETFs. That bounce long trade worked beautifully. I had mentioned that I took a SPY trade using call option. That was very profitable. Throughout the week it went up. On Friday also it went up. However, by the end of the day it paired back its gains. That is shown by the upper tail. That means at least on Friday bulls were not so strong. Friday's activity was high but not very or extreme high. If it was very or extreme high, then we might conclude that sellers were more aggressively selling at the higher price levels, around 275. But it was not that aggressive selling, high but not very or extreme high activity. And on Friday, it in fact closed positive. We know that from the green color of the activity bar. Right now, there is no trade setup. The last trade setup was based on the bounce setup at the end of Friday that worked well. Now, if it tilts down or maybe goes up a little bit and then tilts down, that may give us low risk trend following go with flow short trade opportunity. If that happens, that would be the first go with flow short opportunity that we will have. Earlier, we could take short trade based on the bearish headwind signal or at least protect profit if the unambiguous checklist was not met and then it fell sharply created lower low it has recovered 
if it goes down again then it will create lower high and thereby give us our first go with flow short trade opportunity if it goes up from here we will not have any low risk entry on the long side we'll see a similar pattern playing out in all the other broad market etfs as well now we are looking at qqq qqq had also dropped with heavy volume last two weeks this week it went up and it went up strongly changing the backdrop candle color to bullish activity was very high in the weekly chart we had a bounce long setup in qqq also that we discussed in the last market roundup that was very profitable on friday qqq initially went up but then came down giving up its gains and in fact turning negative we know that from the red color of the activity bar if it goes down from here it may give us a low risk short trade opportunity however the weekly backdrop candle color is cyan so it may not meet the requirements of the weekly checklist that is fine we don't have to track a trade on qqq if qqq goes down then there will be many go with flow or box or bounce short opportunities in stocks we may keep an eye on that dow jones industrial average etf dia also recovered this week but not enough to change the backdrop candle color in weekly chart to neutral it remains magenta that is bearish weekly activity was very high but nowhere near the activity of previous week when it dropped heavily it also had a bounce long trade setup that gave nice swing trade profit on friday it paired back its gains and in fact turned negative like qqq so it's not that only qqq turned negative on friday dia also turned negative spy remained positive for dow jones industrial average the weekly candle color is magenta so next week if it goes down it may give us a low risk trend following go with flow short trade opportunity meeting all the conditions of the unambiguous checklist iwm russell 2000 etf also recovered this week but not enough to turn the backdrop candle color neutral it remains magenta that is bearish activity was high but not very or extreme high and nowhere near the activity of one week ago iwm also had a bounce long trade setup that gave nice profit on friday it paired back its gains however it still closed positive it is interesting to see the pairing back on friday of gains of all the four broad market etfs there was no negative news in the market we will see if the etfs give us a v shape recovery or not just based on friday's action is difficult to say but probably it will not be as smooth v shape recovery as it had earlier next we move to sector performance sector performance show massive flip flop from previous week to this week we saw 3 weeks ago all the sectors went up then for two successive weeks all the sectors went down and for this week all the sectors went up again we do this sector analysis by analyzing 11 sectors and we study them across three review periods red bar represents performance of this week 
green bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up and any bar to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. This week all the red bars are on the right side of the zero line showing that all the sectors went up and they went up by significant percentages more than 5% here almost 8 point something percentage for information technology this volatility that is visible at the sector level is evident in the stocks as well Interestingly, there is not a single sector that moved in the same direction over the three review periods. That is also showing the flip-flop of the sectors. Consumer discretionary is of interest. QH shows that consumer discretionary and information technology both decelerated on Friday. These were up for a while. You may watch for a possible decline in stocks in these sectors and protect profit in long positions using Q protection signal. We'll uncover further weakness in consumer discretionary when we do industry analysis. Energy sector is the worst performer over one month, 10 days, as well as five days periods. However, we saw that oil ETF, US oil, is the only instrument that didn't significantly pair back its gains on Friday. If the energy sector accelerates next week, meaning the five days pace column turns cyan, it isn't cyan yet, we look at the Q edge scorecard soon. If energy sector accelerates next week, it may give some buy opportunities for stocks that are at low level. QH also shows that some of the energy industries have already started accelerating in this week, meaning their five days pace column has already turned cyan. At sector level, which is more broad, the five days space column hasn't turned cyan, but drilling down some industries we find like oil and gas exploration and production. It has already turned cyan over five days space column, showing that it has already accelerated enough. 24 stocks in this industry went up by between 5 to 21 plus percentage in this single week. We may keep an eye on this industry and probably some other energy industries as well to see if we can have some low risk, long opportunity. Telecom industry or telecom sector also as a whole was weak for a long time. From QH scorecard, we see that some of the industries may be creating a bottom and we may have low risk by opportunity in some of them. Some stock that we had identified earlier like CenturyLink did very well. This week it went up again. We could take it as a long term investment and that continues to do very well. We could take it as swing trades at different points and those swing trades are also doing very well. Best performing industries. As the market bounced up, several industries went up strongly. All the 10 best performing industries were down one week ago. Also, underlying a massive flip flop. When the best performers were down one week ago, then we know that the bounce was sudden and sharp. Alternative carriers is one industry. 
that was down for a while but then started to go up. We could catch the exact turning point using QH and we could also drill down and identify this stock century link. It was optimally valued. It is still optimally valued. We could catch it at the very bottom using bullish headwind signal. And this week it went up again by 18%. Looking back, you could catch the very bottom using 360 degrees analysis. That is by analyzing this industry alternative carriers, drilling down two stocks, identifying century link as one with optimal valuation and then looking at Q charts, low risk buy points. From the bottom, since the time it displayed bullish headwind, both in daily and weekly in early December 2017, the stock is up 43%. And this Monday, 12th February, CenturyLink gave a box long trade setup on the daily hop on chart. That trade is also already profitable. Soon we will go to QH and drill down to the stocks of this industry and then look up century link on Q charts. Before we do that, we discuss brewers. This industry is also of interest because it was lagging for a long time and now showing signs of possible reversal. Molson Coors tap is optimally valued in Q vital. It went up significantly 9.7% this week after forming a false downside breakout on Wednesday 14th February. It was at pendulum low at that time. Now it has displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart. There may not be any immediate long trade opportunity because I saw some memory resistance lines nearby in the daily chart. However, this industry is recovering from earlier weakness and the stock Molson Coors is optimally valued. So we may continue to keep an eye on this stock to find suitable low risk long trade opportunity. Let's go to QH now and look at some of the sectors characteristics and industry characteristics that we discussed so far. Every time we open QH, it analyzes 11 economic sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. For each of the review periods, let's look at the 5 day period that is the primary period for deciding trade entry both for swing trading and long term investment. It assigns a score of 1 to the worst performer, large number to the best performer and also applies a color gradient, magenta to the weakest, cyan to the strongest. Consumer discretionary is one sector that was cyan for long time. It was relatively strong which score between 9, 10, 11. That is very high. And then over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day period, it rapidly declined in score from 8 to 7 to 3 and over 1 day period, only 1, the worst performing sector on Friday. That first deterioration also showed up as deceleration, that's the magenta color across the 1, 2 and 5 day periods for base column. It is not usual to find a sector or an industry that is showing deceleration across all the pace review periods. Usually the 1 day period becomes magenta first and then 2 day period and finally 5 day period. Here we see all the three periods are magenta, meaning 
that it is rapidly deteriorating throughout the week over five days two days and one day so if you are holding consumer discretionary stocks probably you are having good profit for longer term holdings because it was strong for long time looking at the deceleration on the base columns magenta color it may be time to protect profit using Q protection signal and also start looking for potential low risk short opportunities. Information technology is another sector that was very strong and is strong still over five day period. However, there is something that we cannot find from the scorecard that we can find from the base columns. The deceleration shows up clearly in the base column over one day that is friday and two day periods it is clear magenta and over five days also it's somewhere in the middle not cyan anymore information technology recovered very well this week qqq was stronger than spy qqq has many infotech stocks However, we are seeing from the scorecard heat map that it is decelerating under the hood. It's not visible on the stock charts. Therefore, if it now starts to go down, meaning the five day scorecard, five days period score starts to turn magenta, then we may have many low risk short trade opportunities in information technology. So we may be careful about long positions holding in both consumer discretionary and information technology. Let's go to industry analysis to identify the strongest industries of the week. We can sort over the primary five day period from largest to smallest. Alternative carriers is one that is strong for a while. It is the strongest over five days. CenturyLink is a stock that belongs to this industry. We can drill down and we find CenturyLink. Clicking the calculator button will retrieve data from Thomson Reuters icon that is Metastock Zenith and calculate the vital statistics. Instantly from the color coding, we see that CenturyLink relatively has the best valuation we know that from the sand color yes the color coding is enough also from the score we see that still now after significant gain from the low where it showed bullish headwind it went up by 43 percent still relatively it has the best possible score of 100 when we started tracking it, that time the dividend yield was more than 14%. Now, because of the price gain, it, the dividend yield percentage has come down. 11.4, still a very respectable dividend yield. It still has a short squeeze score that was useful also to make a decision to buy it at the very low point. In fact, when I started discussing Century Link, I saw there was a review of CenturyLink by one of the very famous persons on TV, Mad Money Show. I don't watch Mad Money Show. That news came up on Thomson Reuters icon saying that the high dividend percentage was an alarm. We shouldn't buy CenturyLink. That was the connotation. However, I prefer to believe my own eyes, it was optimally valued. It had a very low risk entry point using the bullish headwind signal or the subsequent first go through long trade opportunity. That was at the stock level, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And from key wage industry analysis, I saw that the industry was starting to go up after languishing for low, long time. So all the three factors were in favor of the long trade and instead of following others advice, 
I believe the data and I took a trade. It was a low risk trade that is a constant in all our trades and the trade worked out pretty well. Even this week there was a trade setup on the daily chart. Let's look at that. At the very bottom it had displayed bullish headwind signals. If we could not take it at that time that is fine we could take a go with flow long trade at this point. Then it moved sideways. Swing traders would have booked profit and exited the trade. Swing traders wouldn't hold it for all this period. Long term investors will be holding the trade probably. This week initially it tried to go below the watermark support level. Activity was extremely high and very next day it reversed with a bull release signal. So technically on the daily chart it gave us a box long trade setup which also completed a false downside breakout. And by Friday it went to upper boundary so we would book profit. Now it is true that it had earnings nearby. We can see that earnings was somewhere between Wednesday's market close and Thursday's open. The earnings resulted in this gap up. When earnings is nearby, I prefer not to take stock long position for swing trading. For long term investment, one needs to carry the stock across earnings. But for swing trading, I would not like to enter a long trade using stock on this box long trade setup. However, we could easily take the trade using short put vertical. Short put vertical will be very profitable when the stock goes up. It will benefit from volatility crash and also from the delta move that is the stock going up. And verticals are very low risk trades. That is my preferred trade instrument near earnings. If the options are liquid enough, that is the bid ask spread is narrow enough. So century link gave very nice profit at multiple points at the bullish headwind point the first go with flow trade opportunity and now a box long trade opportunity and all along we were taking trades in century link not only using technical charts we were always looking also at industry its strength and the fundamental strength of the stock i mentioned about energy sector and its industries let's look at that we can go to the sectors put our cursor anywhere on the energy row and click on the drill down before going to the industries we see that energy was weak for long time magenta it is still magenta however on friday it accelerated the cyan color shows that face column over one day. I am always keeping an eye on the transitions from magenta to cyan in the scorecard or magenta to cyan in the face columns. So I saw that happening in energy and I drilled down. And now I saw that acceleration is visible in most of the industries either across one day review period or for this one across five day period as well that is oil and gas exploration and production let's drill down into this industry it's retrieving data if we click the calculator button it will go back to icon again retrieve data on the stocks and calculate vital statistics Let's go to scorecard, refresh the data, sort them based on valuation. Get the best valued stocks to the top. We see several stocks are still optimally valued. So we can look for buying opportunities in them. 
for longer term investment as well as for short term trading for short term trading it is okay to trade the stocks with yellow valuation as well but i prefer not to try to take long trades both short term or long term when the stock is already overvalued because at least the people who trade based on fundamentals will avoid these stocks so i like to have more edges in my trades favor so i avoid taking long trades in the stocks that are overvalued both for long term investment and swing trade we could go to the performance panel short over 5 days largest to smallest and you will find 24 of the stocks from here 24 stocks had gain between 5% to 21.5% in this single week this was happening while the industry was accelerating so we could keep an eye on the industry acceleration and drill down into some of the stocks and try to take swing long trades right at the point they were going up i can see some of them were and still are optimally valued right now you may keep an eye on some of the stocks some of them have gone up significantly you may have to wait for the next low risk entry point if the industry continues to go up if oil or energy sector continues to go up we may have long term as well as swing long opportunities in this industry it is still weak we can take a long trade and hold it for a while until some of the monthly periods also turn cyan we may buy at the low and book some profit quickly and let profit run on the remaining position what about consumer discretionary i mentioned consumer discretionary very strong earlier now decelerating let's drill down and then sort them from smallest to largest or let us sort them based on acceleration deceleration in this case and we find several of these industries computer and electronics retail multi line retail apparel accessories and luxury goods these were cyan earlier now turned magenta over the primary five days period and also they all decelerated so they went down and turned bearish over the primary five days period these were strong for long time so if you were holding long positions if you were able to let profit run you are having good profit in several of these stocks the score turning magenta and the deceleration showing up may be the alert for protecting profit using q protection signal worst performing industries we look at worst performing industries now in last two weeks it was difficult to find industries that were going up only about 5 or 6 industries were up of more than 170 industries that we tried this week the bounce was very sharp and large it is now difficult to find declining industries we don't even have 10 declining industries this week only 8 from here healthcare rates ended in break even and integrated oil and gas actually went up so we have only eight industries that went down this week again showing that the reversal was sudden and sharp diversified metals and mining is the worst performer the bar looks very long relative to the others but it is a decline of about 3.6% this industry is one of the worst performers for a while while it was performing poorly this stock compass minerals cmp.n cmp is the ticker symbol dropped by 15% in one month it fell nicely after giving go with flow short trade setup 
on 29th Jan. Looking at the industry's weakness, we could drill down to the stock and take a short trade when this going through short setup appear. As of today, two other stocks, Materian Corp, MTRN and Ferroglobe, GSM, are fundamentally overvalued. They don't have any short signal right now, but it may give us low risk short opportunity if the industry continues to go down. Let's start with QH, drill down and then look at the technical charts. In QH, to find the worst performing industries over our primary review period 5 days, we sort from smallest to largest. Let's refresh the data. Earlier it was drilled down from consumer discretionary by clicking the refresh button, refreshes the data and we sort again. Diversified metals and mining. It's already weak for a while and the worst performer this week. You can drill down by clicking this button. We have three stocks. We can click the calculator to retrieve data, calculate vital statistics. Going to scorecard, we can look at additional panels. If we go to performance panel, we see that CMP declined by 14%, more than that over one month period. If we go back to the valuation score, we see that it is now optimally valued because it has already dropped somewhat. Let's look at the chart of CMP. CMP went up in this area, then moved sideways for a while, displayed a magenta color candle, and then again the second magenta color candle. This magenta color candle gave us a go with flow short trade setup. We already had lower high, and that short trade was very profitable. It has already declined significantly and is near the watermark support in daily, also near the watermark support in weekly. So we are not going to try any short trade now in CMP. We already had the opportunity here that was very profitable. It has declined, so it is not overvalued anymore. That is another reason we are not very keen to short this stock right now. Whereas the other two stocks are overvalued now. These are MTRN and GSM. They are overvalued. So if they give low risk short opportunity on the chart, then we'll again be able to align the three forces, industry level forces, fundamental forces, and technical forces in favor of our trade. Let's look at these two stocks, MTRN and GSM using Q charts. In this candle, we see after earnings, it went up. That up move created a watermark resistance level. Price tried to go above that. A bearish headwind appeared in the weekly chart that was able to pull price down. This week was earnings week again. It recovered. It has one upper tail. The candle color in weekly is still bullish. Shape is also bullish. Though the upper tail will give us reason not to take a long trade right now. In the daily chart, it came from upper boundary straight to lower boundary. These are wild swing areas. It's not easy to take low risk short trades here except that we have non-trend following setups as well many swing traders only take trend following trades however we are happy to take reversal trades in fact three of our trade setups are reversal trades catering for very distinct market scenarios here we see that price tried to go above the watermark resistance in daily. That was the same watermark that was present in weekly. 
and then reversed, creating a false upside breakout. That was the same time that the false upside breakout happened in weekly and the same time that the bearish headwind also appeared in the weekly. Using all these signals, we could take a low risk short trade somewhere on this magenta candle stop just above recent high. That short trade setup will also be very profitable. It would be a box short trade setup using false upside breakout and further supported by the weekly bearish headwind signal. Then we could book some profit and let profit run till the price came to lower boundary. Then earnings was coming up so we will not like to hold swing trade across earnings. We will exit it before earnings. At earnings it went up. Now we see that there is an inside candle on Friday. The candle traffic light color is still green, bullish. So we are not going to take any short trade at the end of Friday. Quickly candle color is also bullish. However, the stock is overvalued. So if we are having long position and we see that it is further going down, maybe breaking the memory support lines, breaking the white direction line, then it may be time to book profit and look for low risk short opportunity. The other stock was GSM. GSM also had a nice up move. However, it declined, declined after earnings. Same as we saw in the last stock. In the daily chart, we see there were multiple bullish headwind signals that resulted in a recovery. On Friday, we have an indecisive candle both in terms of color and shape. Shape with both upper tail and lower tail, very narrow body. Next week, if it goes down, it may give low risk short opportunity, especially if the industry continues to go down. Right now there is no trade setup because the industry is weak, the stock is fundamentally overvalued. If there is a low risk short opportunity, that may be a very profitable opportunity to take short at a higher level, highest price level. Every week we also study the accelerating industries. They often tend to be the best performers in subsequent weeks. We see two interesting industries in this week. One is wireless communications. It was lagging for a long time. Other is drug retail that was also lagging for a long time. In wireless communication, telephone and data systems, TDS, gave a box long trade setup on this Thursday that could be entered efficiently using real-time fine-tune chart. What I mean by efficiently is by observing a support on longer term chart that is daily chart and then using fine-tune real-time chart, five minute chart to precisely enter the trade with very low risk. Later on I will go through the chart to explain the entry mechanism. While this opportunity came, it also created false downside breakout in daily and weekly both. TDS is still optimally valued. So we could take the trade combining industry's acceleration, fundamental strength as well as technical low risk buy point. Another stock, very well known to people who fly around, probably all of you, <laughs> Boingo Wireless Wi-Fi is the symbol has better growth among peers. It went up after giving a go with flow long signal on this Wednesday, 14 Feb, and already hit the profit target of upper boundary by Friday. It is already at a high price level. So Wi-Fi is not a stock where I will like to take a long-term investment right now. But for swing trading, one could easily take the go with flow long setup of 14 Feb. Let's go to key wage and analyze wireless 
telecom industry and its stocks. We can start from sector. Remember, we saw that sector may be accelerating. We can drill down to its industries. Wireless telecom is one that accelerated. Immediately, we can see that from the cyan color. We can drill down further to the stocks. It's retrieving the data. We have multiple stocks. Clicking the calculator, we'll retrieve data and calculate fundamental statistics. TDS is still optimally valued. And the other stock I discussed was Wi Fi, Boingo. It has nice growth. You can go to scorecard. To see growth, we can go to the growth panel. From growth panel, we see Wi Fi, Boingo Wireless has nice growth for earnings and also reasonable growth for revenue for the yearly periods and for recent quarters it has nice bright green growth for both earnings and revenue. Let's look at Boingo's chart. Wi-Fi. This week Boingo wireless went up strongly. On this day it gave us a cyan color candle. It had a higher high earlier and on this candle it gave us a higher low. With a sand color candle, we would be more happy to take the trade because we had three direction lines coming together. The unambiguous checklist for go with flow trade requires only two of the lines going up together, that is the magenta and cyan. In this case, we had the support from the yellow line as well. The stock had nice growth and the industry was doing well so we could take a very low risk go with flow long trade setup and book profit by friday as i mentioned it is already at a high level also at a level where bearish headwind had come earlier that was able to push price down somewhat so i am not going to take a long trade now and certainly not a long term investment right now in this stock a good time to take long term investment would have been here at a much lower price level. The other stock was TDS, Telephone and Data Systems. In Telephone and Data Systems, the stock was declining rapidly in the weekly chart. We already knew that the watermark support was there. We could draw it and just as price went down and reversed creating a false downside breakout we could take a very precise long trade let us draw the lines and see that let me first draw the line on the weekly chart horizontal line at this watermark support level and now i change the chart to daily chart in q Elite for trade station, we have hotkeys. We can use the hotkey. I can see that on this day, the, this yellow color candle, we still had the stretch on the downside, the red dots, showing that it was still bearish, not bullish enough to take a long trade. Then the bull release came on this cyan color candle. Price closed far above this watermark support that we knew were there in the weekly chart. So now we could move to fine tune chart and take the long trade just as price crossed above this line, above this price level 24.63, say 24.6 in fine tune chart. Let's go to fine tune chart and we can see that we would be able to take that on Thursday. Right? So let's see on Thursday how we could take it. We will use the early range breakout technique probably. This is Thursday's market begin. Soon after market open, the early range high and low were formed. And this was the level of the watermark support. So we will not take a trade 
when the early range high is broken instead we will wait for the price to break the watermark support that is a false downside breakout take a long right at this point and put stop just below early range low by the end of the day we had profit that was much higher than the risk taken this was the risk taken and we had probably 1 is to 2.5 1 is to 3 reward risk ratio so we could easily book some profit and put a stop on the remaining position in a way that the rest of the trade is risk free from now onward the industry accelerated the stock is optimally valued it is starting to go up from bottom so we will not have any reason to exit the full position we could use stops creatively so that the trade is risk free from now onward this technique works very well and we often use this technique of identifying support for long trade support on longer term time frame weekly chart in this case and then enter the trade precisely using shorter time frame 5 minute chart or 10 minute charts for example we analyze two profitable trades one on tds and another on wi-fi boingo boingo had a go with flow long trade setup and tds had a box long trade setup the other industry i mentioned worth noting is drug retail it was lagging for a long time very well known stock cvs is optimally valued right now created a false downside breakout in both weekly and daily charts bouncing up from watermark supports it gave a box long trade setup on daily chart on thursday 15th february this thursday and on friday it went up by two percent again an industry that was lagging earlier let's look at qh we came here to study the accelerating industries to see the accelerating industries we can sort using the pace five days column largest to smallest well list communication is one that is accelerating sand colored in pace and drug retail also accelerated it's of more interest to me because the scorecard was magenta earlier week for long time and now accelerated and over two days and one days the score has already turned cyan five days hasn't turned cyan yet that is how using acceleration we could take the long trade before others much before it is visible even on the scorecard you can drill down to the drug retail stocks three stocks clicking the calculator we will retrieve the data and calculate vital statistics cvs immediately we see it is optimally valued is a reasonable dividend of 2.7 percent it's close to 52 week low as well good earnings quality so if we could find a technical setup in cbs we will be identifying again a 360 degrees analysis long trade setup an industry that was lagging but accelerating a stock that is fundamentally strong and a stock that is at technical buy point let's see cvs in the weekly chart cvs tried to go below this watermark support it had tried to go below that earlier and reverse nicely now again it tried to go below that there is a tail below the watermark then reversed it had heavy activity one week ago so it created a false downside breakout in weekly let me change the daily template to advanced hop on so i can see the watermark level in daily we can see during earnings it dropped heavily for these two candles went below the watermark support and on this yellow candle for the first time we had a bullish shape candle at least neutral color candle and a bull release signal until this candle we didn't have bull release and also the candle shapes were not bullish color was neutral 
So we will be able to take a long trade on this candle. That would be a box long trade setup using forces from industry fundamentals and technicals. On Friday it went up. Now remember just now we discussed the technique of identifying the watermark level and using fine tune to precisely enter the trade. If we were doing that, keeping an eye on fine tune, we will not need to wait for Thursday's close. Let's see where we could enter the trade. First, I draw a line at the watermark support level and then change to fine tune template. So we have the watermark support from daily chart at this level. On Thursday, the early range high and early range low form. It didn't immediately go above early range high. So we were not trying to take a early range breakout long entry in this case. It came down and we were watching it nicely went below the watermark support that was in weekly. Created a bull release signal on this candle and then closed above the watermark support on this candle. So we'll be able to take a long trade at this point. That would be the beginning of a false downside breakout in daily. And also as it turned out in the weekly chart. However, we will not be entering the trade with risk levels associated with daily or weekly charts. We are now using only 5 minute interval. So our risk is minuscule. By the end of the day, by the end of the day, which is at this level, we already had profit that was much more than the risk taken. If we wanted, we could close the position or we could hold the position. Those who were using daily chart would be able to take the trade right at the end of the day. That would show the false downside breakout on the daily chart. Again, we can see using fine tune chart and keeping an eye on support levels on longer time frame. We could much more precisely take the trade with lower risk and much better reward risk ratio. This technique can be applied for all the reversal setups that we have. Bounce setup where it is bouncing up down from memory or deep watermark. Box setup where it is going up down, mostly using false breakout that is even more powerful from watermark. Headwind maybe not so much because headwind doesn't have any pre-known price level. So let me rephrase again: this kind of entry using longer term time frame can be easily taken for the box and bounce trade setups. We study the decelerating industries because they tend to be worst performers in coming weeks. Remember the weakness that we saw in consumer discretionary sector level that is more evident from the decelerating industries list. We always study the 10 industries worst or best performer and the 10 decelerating industries list has seven of them from consumer discretionary. These are laser products, automobiles, motorcycle manufacturers, automobile manufacturers, computer electronics retail, multi-line retail, apparel, accessories, luxury goods. Several of these industries were strong for a long time. You may have good profit in some of the longer term holdings. It may be time to be cautious. There is weakness showing up both at sector level and this industries level. I looked at some of the apparel industries and found these stocks Boot, B O O T, Boot Barn, TJX, TJX companies, and Lulu, Lulu Lemon. We may be careful about them. This is not in real time, but we can go to Industry Rotation USA. Text filter begins with apparel. And we have two industries. Using QH, we could drill down. Or if we are using offline data, then we can go to stock scorecard USA. Text filters begins with apparel. 
we have these apparel stocks. If I sort by relative valuation, then I find multiple stocks that are overvalued. Lululemon is one of them, Boot is one of them, TJX is also one of them. That is how I found these stocks. Let's have a look at these charts. Boot, Lulu and TJX. Boot burn went up very sharply and then went above the watermark resistance. Earlier it dropped heavily from this level. So it is possible that some sellers will be happy to sell here. We see earnings candle here and then a reversal candle with upper tail. Candle color turned magenta in the weekly chart and then another magenta candle. It is still above the watermark resistance in weekly. If it closes below that, it will complete a false upside breakout. Those who could buy at the lower level using probably our 360 degrees analysis have very good profit on some position, remaining position. They may be careful if the stock goes below this watermark level. In the daily chart, we see that a false upside breakout happened on this yellow candle when the bear release signal, the magenta star came up. Magenta color means it was also at pendulum high at that time. Then another magenta candle came. However, it has a memory support. So we are not going to take any shot right now. It may be more appropriate to protect profit in long position in this stock and then look for potential shorts. Not yet there but may be coming soon especially if the apparel industries continue to weaken. Let's look at one of the other two TJX. TJX also came to the watermark resistance in weekly from where price had dropped heavily earlier. Created a reversal candle in weekly chart with bear release signal dropped from there. In daily chart, the equivalent level would be somewhere here. Tried to go up and came down. It's around 81. Around 81. So actually it was here, somewhere here. Tried to go up and came down, creating a false upside breakout. Then it dropped. Now at the right edge, it has recovered to value area. Friday's candle shape is very bearish. If it falls from here, it may give a very low risk short trade opportunity in TJX. Weekly candle color is already magenta, so that will allow us to take a short trade. Remember this pattern in TJX in the daily chart is somewhat similar to QQQ. However, QQQ weekly candle color was not bearish anymore. That's why I mentioned if QQQ goes down, then the market may be also going down. Even if we don't have checklist meeting short trade setup in QQQ, there will be other stocks. TJX would be a perfect example of that, that may give us a go with flow short trade opportunity. Very low risk and the first go with flow short trade that we could take in TJX after its up. In multi-line retail, I found this stock Olis Bargain OLLI. This is overvalued and dropped after giving bearish headwind signal at pendulum high on 30th Jan. You may protect profitable long position. It may be time to protect profit and look for low risk short opportunities. It's not there yet, but maybe coming soon. Let's summarize as correctly anticipated in last weekly market roundup. There was significant bounce in all the broad market ETFs and also in many, many stocks. We had profitable bounce long trade setup that worked nicely. This week the market bounced, however, it is still far from the peak that was made. Will it make another V shape reversal and take out previous peaks? We are not sure yet. 
all the broad market ETFs are near value area. They paired back their gains on Friday. We don't have any clear signal yet because the candle colors are still bullish. If next week it goes down, it will give low risk short opportunity in many ETFs and many stocks. If it goes up, we will not have low risk entry opportunity in the stocks that already bounce. At the same time, we saw several sectors and industries in them. Brewers, for example, or wireless industry. We have stocks that are optimally valued, that are at optimal technical buy point also. We may look for long term as well as short term long trades in those industries. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks to all of you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.